uh, reason for your existence. Meaning, if you are trying to achieve some something, you have to know what are you achieving and why are you trying to achieve that. Right? So, whenever you are doing anything in your life, you know, you want to know why you are, you are doing so. What is the purpose? Even if you achieve it, what are you go going to do with it? Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that, look, know why you were created and then what should you do in order to be happy in this world so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said for that you need to understand quran because i have explained all of these questions right the answers are there now my dear brothers and sisters in this very short time every friday that we have half an hour 25 minutes it's a very short amount of time so we cannot go over all those ayahs so let me touch upon one or two ayahs on this topic only, right? Now, how many, how many amongst you, mashallah, had memorized Suratul Mulk? Hands up. Suratul Mulk, from the beginning till the end. Suratul Mulk. Okay, good. Those of you who have not memorized yet, let me share a beautiful saying of our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a person who will memorize Suratul Mulk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish him in, uh, in his grave. Suratul Mulk. So you will not be punished in your grave if you have memorized Suratul Mulk. And how lengthy is Suratul Mulk? Only 30 ayahs. Now, Surah Al-Baqarah has 286 ayahs. 286 ayahs. It's spread over two and a half juz. But Surah Al-Mulk is 30 ayahs. Two pages, two and a half pages, that's it. Done. But the reward for that is that Rasulullah is guaranteeing that a hafiz of Surah Al-Mulk will not be punished in his grave. So my dear brothers and sisters, if you believe in life after death, if you believe that there is a life in Qabr, then what is stopping you from memorizing Surah Al-Mulk? Think about it. I mean, Al-Ayad Billah, if a person doesn't believe in life after death, so we don't have to talk to him about. But I'm talking to Muslims who believe in every word that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said. So when Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling you such a big news, that in your grave you will not be punished by Allah if you had memorized Surah Al-Bulk. Then what is stopping you from memorizing Surah Al-Bulk? Think. Right? When it has only 30 ayahs. Right? Small surah. Anyhow. Besides this. Now look into the first two ayahs of Surah Al-Bulk. Right? I recite to you, you, you listen, and then try to understand what Allah is trying to say. Allah is saying, الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Second ayah. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتِ وَالْحَيَاتِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ Two ayahs, the first two ayahs of Surah Al-Mulk. Now look at the meaning. Allah is saying, Allah is the most exalted, the most blessed, Tabarak. All blessings come from Allah. So the name of Allah is full of blessing. Allah is saying, Tabarak al -ladhi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the basis of all blessings. Who is Allah? Alladhi biyadihil mulk. Allah is so powerful that everything is in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadeer. And Allah has complete control over everybody. Everybody and everything is under Allah's control. So that is the might of Allah. That is the power of Allah. Now look at the second ayah. And here you see the purpose for which Allah had created you and me. 
اللہ تعالیٰ اللہ دی خلق الموت اللہ از دا ون ہو ایڈ کریٹڈ ڈیتھ ول حیات ہی ایڈ کریٹڈ لائف وائی لیا بلوا کم ایو کم احسن عملہ so that he can see who amongst you is going to do the most beautiful acts in this world. Now, underline this word, Ahsan, most beautiful. Who amongst you is going to do the most beautiful of deeds? Meaning, whose life is going to be the most So Allah is saying, I just, I created you so that I can see, see that in you. And wa huwa al-aziz al-ghafoor. And Allah is all powerful and he's all forgiving. Meaning if you make mistakes in doing so, don't worry. Allah is there to, to forgive you. But try. Try your best to live the most beautiful life in this world. Now, my dear brother said, this became the purpose of our creation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is that, brothers and sisters? لِيَا بُلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا So that Allah can see who amongst you can do, do the most beautiful deeds. Who can lead the most beautiful life on this earth. Right? Now, to have a beautiful life, you know, you need to have love. محبہ without love there is no beauty there is no beauty without love therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made love the center point of our deen meaning you love your creator and then you love his creation and you will lead the most beautiful life Right? So you love the creator Allah and you love Allah's creation. All of them. And you will lead the most beautiful life on this earth. Now, Allah is saying that this is what I want from you. Right? I'll try to repeat that the old lesson again with you. And that lesson is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Again, I would like you to draw your attention to this. I, I spoke on this a few weeks ago, but I'll try to repeat it again. What does the word Bismillah Rahman Rahim mean? I'm starting this act, Bismillah. B means with. So I'm going to start this name with the name of Allah. And who is Allah? Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. The most gracious, the most merciful. The most gracious and the most merciful. Brothers and sisters, your mom is gracious to you. Your dad is gracious to you. Your siblings are, are gracious to you. Your true friends are gracious to you. Why? Because they love you. Your mom loves you irrespective of how good or how bad you are. Mom will always love her, her child. Why? Because Allah created every mom with mercy and she's always gracious. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said that Allah is 99 times more gracious and merciful to his people than a mom is towards her child. 99 times more. So when a mom loves her child, irrespective of how disobedient he or she is. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is 99 times more merciful and gracious, how much love he has towards his creation. So Allah loves you more than you can even, even uh, uh, imagine. Right? Now, Allah loves you because Allah created you. Allah said, I have created you, your, you are my responsibility. So, if you read the 
first ayah of the 12 Jews. وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا I have created living beings and I am going to provide them food, right? Irrespective of whether you believe in me or not, I will provide you. Whether you are praying salah or you are not praying salah, you will get food on your table. You are obedient to Allah, you are disobedient to Allah, Allah is saying it doesn't matter. I am, it's my responsibility to feed you. Now your responsibility was to recognize me, but, but you fail in doing so. That's your failure. But I will not fail as Allah. As your creator, I am not going to fail. I am going to still provide you with sustenance. That is Allah. Why? Because Allah is so full of love. So although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had 99 beautiful names, right? Walillahi al-asma'ul husna. And among those names are some names that show Allah's anger and Allah's punishment. Right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say Bismillah rahman rahim al-muntaqim al-qahar. No. Allah did not say that, no, I am the one who will take revenge from you. I am the one who is going to crush you. So start doing good deeds in my name and think about my punishments. No. Allah did not mention that. Right? 114 surahs in Quran. And 114 times Allah have used this word, Bismillah rahman rahim Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you and me to understand this fact very well, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really, really loves everyone. Now, when Allah loves us, so in order to lead a beautiful life in this world, Ahsan, we need to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must understand that we cannot truly love Allah without loving His creation. Without loving His creation. Meaning, I have to love you. You have to love me if we want to love our, our Creator. So our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said that none of you can be a true Muslim, true believer until he loves everyone. And my dear brothers and sisters, on this topic, there's a very small hadith that I'd like to share with you. And I pay attention to this and if you are interested, you can even memorize and think about it. What is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Irhamu, oh sorry, Rasulullah subhanahu said, Irhamu man fit dunya. Irhamu man fit dunya. Yarhamukum man fit sama. Irhamu man fit dunya. Yarhamukum man fit sama. Allah says, Rasulullah said, that Allah have said that, show love, compassion to everyone who is living. Love, compassion to everyone, every living being. So, show love and compassion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the most compassionate, he will show his special compassion to you. And here Allah did not say that, okay, love Muslims only. Hate non, non-Muslims. No. Rasulullah did not say so. He said, irhamu man fit dunya. Right? Show mercy, compassion, love to everyone who is living. Right? Just like Allah in Quran said, Wakulu linnasi husna. Not lil muslimina husna. Allah said, Wakulu linnas. Always talk beautifully to people. You have a Christian, an atheist, a Hindu, a Jewish, a Buddhist, whoever is there. Allah in Quran saying, you show your akhlaq, let him show his color to you. But you should show your true color and that is waqulu linnasi husna. You should uh, talk to people in a nice way. Why? Because they are also the creation of Allah just like you are a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, talking about leading a beautiful life on this earth, ahsanu amala, what we learn is that we 
have to love our creator allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we have to love his creation now brothers and sisters in our deen allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says lip service is not good <laughs> good enough i mean you can you, you can keep saying that i love allah i love allah i love allah that is not good enough until you follow your statement by following and obeying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning obedience to allah is a sign that you love allah disobedience to allah is a sign that you don't love allah therefore allah in quran in multiple places said ya ayyuhalladhina amanu ati'ullah oh those people who believe follow allah if you say that you love allah then follow allah why is the following why is the obedience right meaning if you are not praying five times every day and you say la ilaha illallah alhamdulillah i am a muslim alhamdulillah i am a muslim allah is saying is a claim without any evidence it's a claim that you are claiming without any evidence right because the evidence is five times salah at least right so if this the five salah are not there and you are saying la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah all the time so you can keep saying it but allah is saying where is the proof that you believe that there, there is no god but allah when allah is saying ya ayyuhalladhina amanu ati'ullah oh 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 those people who believe obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now my dear dear brothers and sisters when you obey allah it is a sign that you love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now comes the second point point loving his creation right loving his his creation so allah in multiple places have said allah khaliqu kulli shay allah is the creator of everything and everybody right so my dear dear brothers and sisters we are all together creation of allah subhanahu wa taala right and just like you are sitting here we are here believe me that one day you and i will be together on the day of hashr on the plane of hashr will be together wallahi brothers will be be together why because allah in quran have said qul innal awwalina wal akhirin lamajmu'una ila miqati yawmin ma'lum o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam teach this concept to the people that those who have come before you and those who will come after you all of you will be assembled by allah at one single place and that would be the day of hashr muhti'ina ila ad-da' yaqulu al-kafirun hadha yawmun 'asir all of us will respond to the call of the caller on the day of hashr and our graves will split open and we'll come out of our graves without wearing any clothes you know the kafan the shroud that people uh, ha- will wrap us our body with that piece of cloth over the time period of time will decay and will finish so every day everybody on the day of judgment will come out of their graves naked without clothes right and aisha said ummul min said that ya rasulullah isn't it that people would be looking at each other if, every, if everybody would be naked so rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said aisha understand the horror of the day of judgment would be such that this thought will not even cross anybody's mind you know it just whether if hurricane comes a flood is coming a zalzala is coming you know you know so who cares what you are wearing if you are in shorts you know you will not go to your closet to to put on clothes and go no you will just run to save your life everybody would be running to save their lives so on the day of hashr when people will come out of the grave naked nobody will be even thinking about where are our clothes so allah said muhti'ina ila ad-da' everybody will be responding to that call right and they will be frightened and kafir will say hadha yawmun asr today is a tough day 
today is a tough day and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further said yawmahum barizun la yakhfa ala allah minhum shay liman al mulk al yawm lillahi al wahid al qahar on that day when all of you will be presented to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing will be hidden nothing will be hidden all of your deeds will be presented to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on that day allah will say okay tell me who can save you today right like for example in this world brothers either you come to the masjid and say no i'm not going to i'm not going to the i'm not going to go to the masjid right in this world you say okay i like ham i'm going to eat ham right i like ham i'm going to eat nobody is going to stop you your your choice right you want to lie you have to deceive whatever you want to do if you want to do it allah is saying you have complete freedom to to do so right so nobody is going to stop you if you don't want to stop yourself right but on the day of judgment allah is saying liman al mulk al yawm who has the power today you cannot move your feet without the permission from allah on that day allah says i gave you long life in this world and i gave you the freedom to choose you violated that you know power that i gave to you on this earth enough so that power is gone today stand in front of me don't move you cannot move right right now your book is going to be presented to you and be quiet and and, and listen see what you have done in your in your uh, in your life so i think liman al mulk al yawm who can say no allah i don't want to you cannot say so i think lillahi al wahid al qahar the the power belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only on that day so brothers and sisters this means that in order to live a beautiful life we need to love allah right and we need to love his creation right spread love and as i said that when you say that you love allah obey allah and his rasul rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam so my dear brothers and sisters death as you know that today we are praying going to pray sal janaza today right of muhammad maali may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him may allah make his qabr rawdatun min min ra'il jannah and may allah give him the shafaa of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the day of hashr i know him since 30 years his family members are here i know them very well for all these 30 years so few things about him and then let's reflect upon ourselves right he is a palestinian brother right and the palestinian community over the last what 70 75 years is scattered all over the world so much oppression had taken place and is taking place in the present day palestine so the 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 palestinian community had gone through a lot right and i think that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put our palestinian brother and sister in, in such a big test right to be a refugee is not easy right to leave your home and if your home is snatched away by evil people the house in which your dad was born your forefathers were born and all of a sudden it is bulldozed or it is snatched away and you are forced to leave your city your house brothers and sisters it is a big ordeal big big imtihan from allah subhanahu wa taala so the uh, palestinian community had gone through a lot when allah subhanahu wa taala takes take test from a community then allah subhanahu wa taala will reward that community as well they don't complain to allah but they say inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun whatever comes is from allah subhanahu wa taala so muhammad maali rahimahullah was one of such person who had migrated and who had left his hometown when he was uh, when he was pretty in uh, in orlando mashallah his children are muslims his children i had the privilege of teaching some of them quran back in 90s 
I was thinking about it when I saw his photo. I was thinking that, mashallah, he was a person who uh, always had a smile whenever I would meet him. Always smiling, right? And uh, no complaints, alhamdulillah. Whenever he would meet me and say, oh, Shaykh, mashallah, and he would always mention to people that Shaykh Talib taught my children Quran when they were young, right? That is his, 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 was his akhlaq. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to say to you one thing. And that is, my dear brothers and sisters, death is a reality. Right? Allah in Quran says, Innama tu aduna la'at. That whatever you have been promised is definitely coming your way. Right? And wama antum bimu'ajizin. And none of you are exempt. Right? Everybody is going to taste death. My dear brothers and sisters, have a strong link with your masjid, please. Like all of us are here today, why? Because we are Muslims. So we are here for Juma, we are here for Salatul Janada, we are here for death. Right? Right? This means that, that my dear brothers, either we come to our masjid on our own will, or we have been forced to come to the masjid. When death is a reality, there will prepare for death. Prepare for death. You know, please do not think that world is something important. World is a very garbage place. When you compare the world to the other world, it's garbage. Nothing here is good. Everything is an illusion. Everything is an illusion. Right? What you think will give you peace will not give you peace. It is temporary false feelings. That's it. That's not, that's not a reality. The reality is life after death. The real peace is after death. Right? Allah has repeated this lesson hundreds of times in Quran, right? That the real life is the is after death, right? As Allah in Quran said, one place, wal akhiratu khayru wa abqa. Akhira is better and everlasting. Better and now you took these two qualities, better and everlasting, and compare these two sifat to this world. Akhirat is khair, better, because in akhira you don't have to make any effort. Everything will come, come your way. Everybody will be serving you. Here you are serving everybody and in return you are getting some dollars. So you are serving everybody and you are getting some dollars. In akhira you sit there. <laughs> you know, all the khilman, all the angels are serving you. Right? So that is khair. And abqa, akhira is everlasting. World will end abruptly, any, any minute. So something which is so fake, which is the world. Why are we losing our iman, our faith, our life, chasing this world? Whatever comes your way, alhamdulillah. But please do not trade your deen for, for dunya. Do not lose your, your iman in order to get some, some money. Right? Therefore, think about it so that when your turn comes to leave, you leave upon iman, la ilaha illallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you and me understand. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah.